Good morning, everyone. Today, I am giving away my trade secret of how to calculate your own macros. And I'll be honest with you, there is no secret about it. You can find this information out there on the internet. So if for some reason, like you lose this post, you can figure out how to track your macronutrients. There's a bazillion of free online calculators out there. I'm gonna give you a little bit of rhyme and reason into why. I'll show you the process that I go through. And um, just this is gonna help you as you move forward, no matter what your next steps are. Here's the deal, you guys. Any calculation that anybody gives you that you get is simply a starting point. Everybody is so different for so many reasons based on body composition, activity levels, sex, um, uh, what else could be different? The way you absorb foods, you know, absorption rates for, for people are, are going to be different. You know, we, some of us can digest gluten. Some of us cannot, some of us can't, some of us do well with dairy. Some of us do not. So what we have to do, we, we use the information as a starting point. We make sure that we're accurate and, um, we use that information and then we can make adjustments accordingly. So we use outcome based decision making. Is this working for me? Yes. Is it not working for me? Okay, I need to change it. So it comes back to a little bit of, of yesterday. Do I need to change my macronutrients? Well, here's, here's, now I'm gonna tell you like how to calculate them as we start to move forward talking about carb cycling, diet breaks, reverse diets, etc. Now, I will start with the, um, I'll start with fat loss macros because most people are interested in fat loss to begin with. And notice how I am saying fat loss and not weight loss. Let's just remember, fat loss and weight loss are two totally different things, especially when you combine the strength training like we've been doing. I'm gonna assume that you guys have increased some muscle mass. You've increased some muscle mass, you've lost some fat. Depending on what ratio that is, the scale may not change. So don't worry so much about the scale. Yeah, it's great to see numbers and things like that, but continue to focus on how you're feeling, how your clothes are fitting, how you're performing, etc. So very basically, in order to calculate your fat loss macros, you're gonna take your weight and multiply it anywhere between 10 and 12. There's no need to go any lower than 10. And let me also back up and say one thing. Your macros are based on your size. If you are a super tall person, you get to eat more food. If you are a tiny petite person, you don't get as much because it doesn't take as much to run your system, your body. So macros are based on size. So I'll say this again, in order to find your fat loss macronutrients, you're gonna take your weight and multiply it anywhere between 10 and 12. And it's also a really nice idea to have that range to know, okay, I need to eat between this much and this much each day. So that's gonna be your caloric starting point. Now, we're gonna find out our protein number first. As you've heard me say several times, you need to be eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you have trouble hitting that number or you prefer to eat more vegan, vegetarian, you don't like the consistency of meat, you don't like all that chewing, you can lower that as low as 0.7 grams per pound, okay? But try not to go any lower than that. Once you have your protein number, then we're gonna find out the other numbers. But here's where a little bit more math comes in. So now I'm gonna to start to use real life numbers. Let's say that you weigh 140 pounds right now. For ease of math, I'm gonna use the multiplier of 10. Okay, oh, actually I lied to you. I'm not gonna use the multiplier of 10 because I wanna show more of a maintenance mode. I weigh, let's say I weigh 140 pounds. I'm in my maintenance mode. So I'm gonna take my, that weight, 140 pounds, and multiply it by 13. That gives me 1820. So 1,820 calories would be on the lower end of my calculated maintenance mode calories. Okay, 140 pounds times one. 
for one gram of protein per pound, that's 140 grams of protein, okay? I'm gonna take 140, multiply it by four, because I know that each gram of protein has four calories. 140 times four is 560 calories. You'll need to know this for math in just a second. So now I have my protein number of 140 grams and my protein calories of 560 calories. That's subtracted from my total of 1820 maintenance mode calories. Now I'm gonna find out my fat. At that 1820 mark, I'm gonna calculate my fat at, I believe, it, did I say 21? At 30%, I went 30%. So I don't really like a lot of fatty foods. I like leaner cuts of chicken. I don't like a heavier beef. I don't care for avocados. I can, I do well better, I do well with more carbohydrates based on the way that I train. So I went with just 30% of my calories coming from fat. So again, you look at your calories, your maintenance mode calories or whatever calories you've calculated, 1,820 calories times 30%, 0.30, that's going to give me 714. So 714, sorry, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry, I just totally botched that math up. <laughs> 546, sorry. 1820 times 0.30, 30% is 546 calories. Okay, so now how many grams of fat is that? I'm gonna take that 546, divide it by nine. That gives me 61 grams of fat for the day. So I'm now I'm sitting at 140 grams of protein, one, pound, one gram per pound of body weight, 61 grams of fat, that's 30% of my calories. And then I'm gonna fill up the rest with carbohydrates. So I'm gonna take the 560 calories coming from my protein, the 546 of calories coming from fat, I'm gonna add those together, subtract that number from 1820 to give me 714 calories. 714 calories coming from carbs divided by four is 178 grams. So now I know everything. And I did I, I and I will type this up in the description so you can use it as a guide. So that's all it is. You have to do a little bit of math, but there you have maintenance mode calories on the low end of the spectrum for somebody who weighs 140 pounds. Easy. So now as you're moving forward, if you are ready to move into maintenance mode, now you know how to take your weight and multiply it anywhere between 13 and 16, find your calories, figure out your protein, then figure out your fat, then figure out your carbohydrates, and ta-da, you have got your number. Now, when you start making adjustments, um, this is more than just like a 30, 40, 40 split, right? Like 30% protein, 40% fat, 40% carbs. So then it does come in handy to upgrade to the premium version of my fitness pal, but you don't have to. As long as you know your numbers, you can look at your screen at the end of the day and say, okay, did I hit these numbers that I have written down for myself? I think it's worth it to get the premium version for the year or maybe even pay for it for a couple months. I think it's like 10 bucks a month so that you can make these little adjustments. Now you'll see fat loss multiplier. You don't wanna go any lower than that 10. So that's why when you hear me say like, I don't believe in 1200 calorie diets, a lot of people will come to me, you know, and they weigh 180 pounds and they think that they need to be on a 1200 calorie diet will no, that's not enough to sustain your body. That is how we get into trouble with our, our metabolism kind of slowing down. It's not necessarily slowing down. It's adapting to what we're giving it. It's starting to work as efficiently as possible. So that is why, remember, our bodies adapt. That is why we have to be proactive and not let them adapt. That's why tomorrow when I talk about carb cycling and diet breaks, you really need to listen to that, especially for anyone who is on round two or moving into a round two. Because I know y'all are gonna freak out when I ask you to eat more food. But this is another reason that diets don't work. So you, you heard me say, macros are based on your size. So when you go, check in with yesterday's, yesterday's video, when should I adjust my macros? 
if you start off at 180 pounds and all of a sudden you now weigh 130 pounds, you don't need as much food as when you did when you were at that larger size. So we have to, we gotta change our macros then, but everything is based on your size. But how can I be proactive in not getting my body to adapt? You start to give it more food as you are losing weight. So your body thinks it's supposed to slow down, but then it's like, wait a minute, she's giving me more food? I guess I have to use this food. So that's how you get your body working for you and not against you, right? We do not want our bodies to be efficient, right? That's the cardio paradox. So those of us, you know, in the beginning, cardio is challenging for us. You know, let's say you train for a half marathon and if, let's say you haven't done much running before and you go out and you run three miles and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. Well, six weeks later, three miles is no longer hard for you. You have to go longer and you have to go faster in order to get that same level of fatigue, in order to get that same energy expenditure from your body. So it's all about tricking your body. How do we do that? By continually giving it more food while we're losing weight, while we're losing fats, and also by adding muscle to our body because muscle requires more energy. Energy equals calories, okay? So tomorrow when I talk about carb cycling and adding more food, know that it needs to happen. We cannot stay in fat loss macros. I don't want anyone staying in fat loss macros really longer than six weeks without taking a diet break. No longer than 12 weeks for sure. And it's not to say you can't revisit that. But when I talk, I'm gonna talk about diet break right now. So basically, let's say you are on fat loss macros for these six weeks. I want you to take a week and eat at maintenance mode. And then next week, you can jump back into your fat loss macros. So that's what I'm personally doing. I do two weeks of um, lower calories, and then I have a week of maintenance mode. Or three weeks. Uh, three, weeks of, three weeks of lower calories, one week maintenance mode. Three weeks, one week. Three weeks, one week. The first time I did it, I've, I just started this phase of my process. I did not gain any weight. Okay, so do not be worried about gaining weight. And also we need to be thinking long term. What's the best for me long term? You have to always have your eyes out in the future when it comes to this. The last thing I want you to do is get stuck on 1500 calories. Six months later, you can't go any lower because you're miserable on any food lower than that. Um, and you're, you, but that, but your body's not responding to that low level of calories anymore. So again, it's about preventing adaptation, all right? So any questions on this, please let me know. Now you know how to calculate you and your spouse's macros if that's what you want to do. But keep in mind, this is a starting point. We use this as information. We see what works. We make adjustments accordingly. So I will type up the math that I gave you in the description of this video because I messed up my words with the fats. I don't want you guys to be confused. But any questions on this, let me know. You guys have an awesome afternoon and I'll talk to you tonight.